Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with History Matters. This time we are on to 10 Minute History, the Russian Revolution short documentary. Uh, and it looks like we're starting in 1894 with the ascension of Nicholas II to the Russian throne. Um, yeah, I'm curious how they'll cover this in 10 minutes. They usually do a pretty damn good job, so let's just go ahead and dive right into the video. 1894, and Nicholas II has just been coronated as the Emperor of Russia. Before Woo! continuing, there's a technical matter which needs to be resolved. Oh. The calendar. To oh, simplify, no. the Russian calendar... <laughs> Start glorious proletariat revolution. By cat food. ...was 13 days behind the Gre Gregorian calendar in use today, which is why some things like the October Revolution are said to have occurred in November. For this episode, oh. both calendars will be used. So, Nick... Compared to other European monarchs, the Russian emperor had a great deal of personal power and had immense influence over political decisions. The Russian emperor is often known as the Tsar, so this was not his official title since it was abolished by Peter the Great in 16... Oh. Huh. Nicholas II was an absolute monarch, which meant that he had the final say on everything concerning the Russian Empire, which was huge. <laughs> During the late 19th One way to century, put it. Russia had seen rapid industrialization. Alongside this came new ideas, such as the communist ideals of a certain Karl Marx, which led oh, to the working class of, of Russia demanding greater representation. So, to grossly over... Communism is considered by many to have been founded in its modern form by two men, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. To simplify, yeah. communism is a political ideology which argues that the means of production, such as factories, should be collectively owned by everyone as opposed to individuals. It wanted to abolish social classes and believed that the economy should be entirely controlled by the central government. The Imperial Russian government suffered from being somewhat distant and incompetent. For example, <laughs> agriculture was slow to industrialise and there were numerous foreign policy failings. The most notable of these failings were the ones which caused conflict with the Japanese. I love the fucking st taped up map here. Japanese, leading to the 1904 Russo-Japanese War. So, to simplify, the reasons for war can largely be chalked up to Japan expanding its influence in Korea and Russia refusing to accept it. The Japanese decided that war would settle okay. it and so launched a sneak attack against the Russian fleet in Port Arthur, which Russia had leased from China. The Japanese would continue with a string of victories, such as the Battle of Mukden and the Battle of Tsushima. This embarrassed the Russians, and during peace negotiations led by a certain Sergei Vita, Russia lost Port Arthur and half of here. Unfortunately for Russia, here. military defeat wasn't their only problem at this time. The most notable event was called Bloody Sunday, in which a priest called Father Gapon led a procession through Russia's capital St. Petersburg to present a petition to the Emperor. The crowd was fired upon, leading to hundreds of deaths, which then caused riots across the Empire. Vita was tasked with reforms. One, stop shooting protesters. Two, political representation. Seriously, stop shooting protesters? It's never a good idea. With ending the rioting and presented a compromise, the formation of political parties and an elected assembly called the Duma. For the record, this Duma was mostly useless since it had no authority and Nicholas II could still do whatever he wanted. Yay. There were some elections and the Marcus emperor appointed a new prime minister, Piotr Stilipin. Stilipin would bring about much needed agricultural reform before being assassinated in a oh. theatre in 1911 in front of the Emperor. 1914 yes. was a big year for Russia since St. Petersburg was renamed to Petrograd because it sounded more Russian. Another <laughs> event which was also probably important was the First World War. In First World War? What's that? Never heard of it. In which Russia had mixed success. To raise morale and against the advice of literally everyone, Nicholas appointed himself as the head of the army. <laughs> he left his wife, Empress Alexandra, in charge of the capital with her advisor, Grigory Rasputin. Oh, After God. Russia's failings on the Eastern you Front, Rasputin was blamed for corrupting the royal family and was eventually assassinated in 1916. Nicholas, as the head of the army, was seen as responsible for the failings of the war. War fatigue and food shortages led to protests which Nicholas had hoped to put down with the army. Well, the army mutinied and joined the protesters. No. In order to calm the situation, some Russian generals met with My Nicholas hurt. and urged him to act. The February Revolution. Unlike in 1905, this time the emperor did not have the backing of the military. World War I had essentially cost too many lives, and everyone was fed up. Since the emperor could no longer rely on force, he had to go. Abdicate, which he did in 1917. Nicholas's abdication led to certain exiled peoples, most Can notably Vladimir crown? Lenin, returning to Russia. It was people like Lenin who undermined the new provisional government by forming a rival one, the Petrograd Soviet. Lenin immediately began calling for the overthrow of the provisional government, promising the Russian people land, food, and an end to the war. The provisional government had decided... And end the war! Everyone is totally a communist, by the way. ...did not to end the war, and many people took to the streets My to hair protest, is amazing. and at the front of this protest stood Lenin's communist faction, called the Bolsheviks. The government forces decided to open fire, oh, and many prominent bodies. Bolsheviks, such as Leon Trotsky, were arrested, and Lenin... Trotsky? Never heard of him. ...was forced to flee to Finland. 
Trotsky wouldn't spend long in prison since the new Russian Prime Minister, Alexander Kerensky, appointed a new head of the army, Lvir Kornilov. Kerensky and Kornilov quickly fell out and Kornilov marched his troops on I hate you! Why are we speaking English on these papers? On Petrograd. Kerensky released many of the Bolsheviks since their military arm, the Red Guard, were the only ones that could stop Kornilov. Kornilov never reached Petrograd due to Bolshevik sabotage and was later arrested. Lenin returned to Russia and in a shocking turn of events, called for the overthrow of the government. This time, the overthrow was to be violent. No way. Lenin placed Trotsky in command of the revolution. The Bolsheviks seized city infrastructure, Kerensky fled, and shortly afterwards the Bolsheviks seized the Winter Palace, the seat of the Russian government. Lenin then declared to the Petrograd Soviet that the Bolsheviks were now in control and Trotsky dismissed their opponents. Things you need to get. Out. Immediately after the revolution, Lenin announced three decrees. There was the decree on peace, which promised to put an end to the war, the decree on land, which abolished private land ownership and allowed peasants to divide land amongst themselves, and the Woo. decree on workers, which introduced a minimum wage. Woo. Lenin also brought in universal health care and education, Woo. increased the rights of women alongside accepting Finland's declaration of independence. Oh, the Bolsheviks nice. announced that they And then they tried to invade them 20 years later. There would be free and fair elections the next month, which the Bolsheviks lost. This was not what Lenin had planned, so he ordered the Red Guard to shut down the elected assembly and had himself placed in charge. Oh, Moscow was declared Russia's new capital and Lenin switched to the Gregorian calendar. In the March of 1918, after some tough negotiations and an invasion, Trotsky and a team of delegates Lenin managed invasion. to secure a humiliating peace with the Central Powers. This treaty, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, gave up all of this territory to Germany in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, although they themselves would be forced to give this up in the Treaty of Versailles. To many in Russia, this peace was long overdue. To others, such as the Czechoslovakian Legion. The Czechoslovak Legion in Russia contained roughly 40,000 men. The Legion was overwhelmingly made up of Czechs. Roughly 10% of its soldiers were Slovakian. And it was huh. a complete betrayal. The Czechoslovakian Legion had fought for Russia in the First World War in return for Czechoslovakian independence from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. After peace was declared, they revolted. We Their had initial a deal. success spurred other enemies of the Bolsheviks to take up arms as well, thus beginning the Russian Civil War in earnest. In terms oh. of the factions, the Bolsheviks okay. and their supporters That's are called the Reds, started. those who opposed them are known as the Whites. Britain, France, Japan and the United States elected to intervene on the side of the Whites. It was mostly to reopen the Eastern Front against Germany, but there was also a great worry about the spread of communism. The Whites were initially very successful, but it wasn't long before their progress stalled. This was because they weren't very unified, and many of those fighting against yeah. the Bolsheviks were fighting for their own independence, not to restore the Russian Empire. The White generals were also somewhat useless. For yeah. example, Alexander Kolchak struggled to keep his officers sober, insulted his allies, and executed oh, tens no. of thousands of people. The white terror. Both the Reds and Whites committed atrocities such as massacring civilians. Yeah, Kolchak was particularly brutal and was responsible for mass ex executions of dissenters. Oh no. Turning them to the Bolshevik That's cause. Good. He did manage to capture Yekaterinburg, where the former emperor was being held. The Bolsheviks didn't want the emperor to fall into enemy hands, and so he and his family were executed oh. on July the 17th, 1918. Okay. The Reds had the advantage yeah. of geography. Their territory was much more compact and had greater levels of industrialization. It had better infrastructure, lines of communication, raw materials and a larger population. To maintain order in this area, the Bolsheviks began what is called the Red Terror. This involved sending dissidents to work camps, shooting protesters and Trotsky holding the families of generals hostage so they'd stay loyal. Oh, Eventually fuck. it became clear to the Allies that the Bolsheviks were going to win. The Allies withdrew and the Czechoslovakian Legion returned to Czechoslovakia, which was independent by then anyway. The collapse of the Russian and Austro-Hungarian empires meant that many peoples in Eastern Europe were looking to establish their own nations and borders. The Polish, led by Józef Piłsudski, wanted to expand the newly independent Poland at the cost of Russia. At the same time, the Bolsheviks were also looking to spread communism to their neighbours and reconquer Russia's old territories. The Bolsheviks also believed that the turmoil in Germany and the former Austro-Hungarian Empire meant that communist governments could be set up there as well. In 1919, the Polish invaded Ukraine and captured Kiev. The Bolsheviks counterattacked and forced the Polish all the way back to Warsaw. Oh. The Polish repulsed the attack, thus maintaining their independence and stopping Bolshevik forces from entering Germany. These borders were established, with Ukraine and Belarus becoming socialist republics, which were essentially Russian puppet states. Having failed to spread communism to Eastern okay. Europe, for now, the Bolsheviks moved to secure their position in Russia. Lenin turned to fixing Russia's economic woes by implementing the new economic policy. This yeah. allowed some... The new economic policy, al po 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 policy allowed farmers to keep some of their surplus crops. This made some of them quite wealthy. The purpose of the reform was to prevent revolt, since people were frankly quite miserable, mostly due to the Civil War. Civil War does make people pretty uh, sad. Private yeah. enterprise, a distinctly non-Bolshevik ideal to help revitalize the economy. In 1922, Russia and its surrounding socialist republics, which were nothing more than puppet states, agreed to form the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 
Lenin had become unwell during the early 1920s and after a series of Oh god, his eyes just look fucking batshit crazy. strokes was left bedridden until his death in 1924. Lenin's death left a power vacuum which only two men could fill. The first was Trotsky, the second was a certain Joseph Stalin. Never heard Stalin of had played a role in the Russian Revolution prior to this, first as an editor of the Bolshevik Do newspaper better. and also as a commander in the Red Army during the Do invasion better. of Poland. By the time of Lenin's death, Stalin held the position of General Secretary, the highest political post in the USSR. Stalin was able to forge alliances with other prominent party members and concealed Lenin's criticisms of him. So Trotsky and Stalin held two distinct positions with how to proceed. Trotsky's position is known Trotsky and to a certain extent Lenin believed that a communist Germany was necessary for the survival of the USSR. As permanent revolution. Yeah. Trotsky felt that unless socialist revolution was encouraged in other countries, the Bolsheviks revolution would halt and it would become impossible for the Soviet Union to survive. Whereas I kind of agree with that. I kind of... <laughs> Right, like, if you're standing alone and no one else really is with you, you know, you're, you're not going to make it far. Stalin believed that communism wasn't strong enough in the USSR to be exported. This policy is the main reason that the USSR didn't directly interfere in the Chinese Civil War. And then, of course, you know, right, communism wasn't strong enough in the USSR. That I do agree with that statement, too. Stalin's yeah, belief, yeah. known Both, as socialism in one country, are, argued that right. socialism within the USSR should be strengthened before it could be exported anywhere else. So, long story short, Stalin was victorious in the struggle for power, and in 1929, Trotsky was it's exiled you. from the Soviet Union. He ended up in Mexico, where he was assassinated in 1940. After his victory, Stalin began to tighten his grip over the Soviet Union. <laughs> he did this via purges, assassination, censorship, and a secret police force, the NKVD. Stalin removed many members of the Communist Party and famously purged the officers in the Red Army. Stalin's most famous tools in maintaining order were the gulags, the successor to Lenin's work camps. The conditions in these camps were almost unbearable and the mortality rates were incredibly high. Stalin wasn't just a tyrant, he also brought about many domestic reforms such as the five-year plans which were designed to improve industrial output, which it did to a miraculous degree. Another reform and caused which... a lot of people to die though. Uh, under the emperor, farms were privately owned and crops were sold for profit. Stalin's collectivization meant that the central government ran the farms and 90% of produce went to the government. By 1939, 99% of the farms in the USSR were collectivized. Produce was collectivization, okay. whereby farmers were forced to unite their farms in order to increase crop yields and speed up mechanization. It should be remembered that Stalin's reforms changed Russia from an empire struggling to keep up to a political and economic powerhouse. So, in that conclusion, the legacy of the Russian Revolution is hard to measure. In many respects, all it did was replace one authoritarian regime with another. It's worth yeah. noting that the actions of Lenin, Trotsky, Stalin and many others helped turn Russia into a superpower, one which was vital to stopping the Nazis. One area where it definitely Ooh. changed the world was that it marks the last point in which Russia and the West saw each other as allies. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank And that was 10 Minute History, the Russian Revolution short documentary by History Matters. I hope you guys enjoyed. I certainly I love History Matters. They always do a great job. And honestly, I felt like this was a well-paced 10-minute history. You know, as I, said, as I said before, the Roman history one was a bit rough. Uh, the fall of Rome, I believe it was, was a bit rough being constricted to 10 minutes. This one, I actually had a bit, of my, a bit of doubts because of how complicated the Russian Revolution is. But the way in which they explained things, I felt they did a damn good job uh, of explaining it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.